Adobe Camera Raw just added great new AI capabilities to enhance your images, including adaptive profiles, generative expand, and non-destructive ways to use denoise, raw details, and super resolution. Let's take a look at this image, which I've already opened up as a Camera Raw Smart Object in Photoshop. And I wanna keep the raw for comparison, so I'm simply gonna right click and choose New Smart Object via Copy. That will protect the original raw while we work on this new copy. The key challenge here, of course, is the foreground is very dark and lacking detail, so we need to do something to boost the shadows. And so traditionally, we would double click into Adobe Camera Raw. This is the version 17 interface, which looks the same. And you probably would reach for the shadow slider. So this would be the old approach. You just go boost it up to something like maybe around, say, 50 or so. You get to something where you can clearly see more foreground detail, but it's kind of a flat result. It's more of like a starting point for more dodging and burning. Just to make this even more clear, let's push the shadows all the way to 100%. It's a very flat result. So the direction we're heading with shadows, it lacks shape and texture and separation. This foreground is pretty blah. So we just wanna bring out as much as you need. So something like around that 50 mark, it's probably a good starting point to do that dodging and burning later. So let's stop here. We'll use this as a comparison for the traditional approach with the shadow slider. So we'll say, okay, let's rename it as our plus 50 shadows. And now we can work on the AI with another new layer. So let's go back to the original, right click and choose new smart object via copy, drag it up top. And again, we're gonna open up Adobe Camera Raw. And this time, instead of using the old shadow slider, we're gonna get a better starting point. Instead of using edits, we actually wanna improve the initial state of the image. Now, the way you've done this in the past is by choosing your profile, because you're not looking at raw data, you're looking at raw data, which has been processed through a profile and then you edit. So if Adobe Color is not the best starting point, you might choose Landscape or Adobe Standard. There's all these different choices and you can find the one which is best for your image. But what none of these are doing is adapting to your image. They're just fixed profiles and you're in charge of picking the best one. It'd be really nice if we had a way to let the profile adapt to the image in a more optimal way. And that's what the new Adobe Adaptive is attempting to do. It's using AI in this beta feature to analyze your image and give you a better starting point. Now, when I click on this, it doesn't look that great. It obviously has tons of shadow detail, but way too much. So you might not love the initial result you get here, but you can edit from here using all the regular sliders or play with this new amount slider. And this is the important thing. This profile actually has an amount slider. So instead of using the full amount of this adjustment, we can just dial it back to something like maybe 50 or so and now we have a more balanced starting point. So we've made no edits to the image at all. We just have a better starting profile. So let's pause here and let's compare this to what we got using the shadow slider before. So we'll say, okay, and we'll rename this as Adobe Adaptive. And watch this foreground outcropping here. With just a shadow boost versus the AI Adaptive, it's not like a night and day change, but very clearly there's a much better sense of light on the highlight side of the rock versus the shadow here. There's much more texture to the image overall. Things really separate. And in fact, I would say the color is even a little bit better here. That's not something Adobe Adapt is really trying to do. It's not adjusting your white balance or anything like that. It just kind of is a little bit better here in this image. So it's a better starting point for the rest of the edit. That's what this is about. And an image like this, in my original RAW, trying to do fully edit this image all the way to a finished state in Camera Raw, I just don't think I would get there. I'd really have to rely on Photoshop for local dodging and burning. But using this new Adobe Adaptive, I went ahead and did a full edit on just a single raw layer and got to this finished result, which I think looks pretty great. I certainly could do even more in Photoshop if I want to, but just look at all the depth and detail here coming from this starting point where it's a pretty flat colorless sky, and a big block of dark detail to get to a result like this, I think is pretty impressive in a single raw layer. And it's possible because I had that a better starting point in these foreground shadows. Now I'm not gonna do this edit, but I just wanna quickly walk you through it so you get a sense of what I've done to this image. So if I open this up, you can see I use the Adobe Adaptive and I dialed back the amount to about 30% here. Notice it says update. So I've done something to the image that requires an update. So there's an update button here and there's an update on the left. I probably was playing with the new, no, not even the denoise, 
but certain changes you make here may occasionally prompt it to rerun this profile. So you can click update here, or you can click over here, and this will actually tell you what it needs to do if you click the down arrow, but it just refreshed it. So if you see that, just update it. But so I've got the Adobe Adaptive dialed back to 30%, and then I just made some pretty standard mild local edits, you know, changing the exposure a bit, you know, some little changes to the local effects or the curve, um, some little color adjustments, tiny little bit of camera calibration, nothing too crazy in terms of a global edit. And then I did a fair bit of local masking to really bring out some of this detail. So it's a bit of dodging and burning within Lightroom, but I don't think I would have gotten there with the standard profile. Here's kind of the before and after on the local edits. You can see there's quite a bit of detail without the local edits, and it just gets that much better with those local edits. So I think that gives you a pretty good sense of the power of this new Adobe Adaptive preset. I think we're all gonna have a bit of a learning curve in terms of the best time and way to use this feature, but I'm very excited for it. I think it has some really nice benefit, especially for images where there's minimal shadow detail by using this adaptive preset. So let's stop here and I wanna take a look at the other new features in Adobe Camera Raw by switching over to another image. So with this image, what we're looking at here is an image that actually has a fair bit of noise, even though we shot at ISO 64, if we look in the details here, there's quite a bit of noise that I want to fix. And of course, the image has some keystoning that's slanted, so I want to fix that as well. And normally, if you do that kind of an adjustment, you're going to run into problems where the corners may need to be cropped because you may run out of pixels. So these are both things we can address with the new ACR version 17. We'll just double click to go into ACR. And let's go work on that noise for us. So I'm just going to zoom in. So we can really see the noise clearly. Let's see some areas of detail like this. And we're gonna go down and in the detail tab, we have the option to denoise. Now in the past, you could only do this when you're opening an image in ACR or do it in Lightroom. And you have a denoise button that would generate an entirely new file. This time, we don't have to create a new file. We'll be able to change it after the fact and we can do it inside of a raw smart object. So we can change pretty much anything that involves raw with this new feature. All you're gonna do is click on denoise. It's gonna go run the process in the background to figure out the better version of it, but it's not gonna give me a new file. I don't have something new to save on the disk. I just get the benefit right inside this file with basically the same results we had before, which look amazing. It's just a much easier workflow. So look how nicely that has cleaned up. If I look from before with all the noise to after, how clean this has gotten. And again, this is an ISO 64 image. This is as clean as my sensor gets, and it has that much noise. Just imagine the benefit you'd have at a much higher ISO. And because it's fully non-destructive now, you can change the amount. In the past, if you had picked, say, you know, 54, that's the amount you had forever. Now you can dial it in the amount, and if you change your mind tomorrow, maybe come back and say, you know what? I wanna have a little bit less and preserve some detail. You have that option. And this non-destructive workflow applies to the denoise, to raw details, and to super resolution, which is what will give you a doubling of your linear resolution or four times the total pixel count. So you can't do denoise and super resolution, but you can do all these things in a non-destructive way now. Now I'll zoom back and switch over to looking at that cropping issue. So in the past, you'd go reach for corrections to the uh, geometry down below. That's moved up to the cropping panel. So if you go to the cropping here, we can of course crop the image, but we also have the option for our transformations to the image or just all the geometry adjustments. So in this case, I wanna correct that slant. And so I need to play with the vertical slider. So I'm gonna grab this and move it until it looks like the edge of that tower is nicely vertical. In the past, once you've done this, you'd have this problem with these open pixels that you could go fill in Photoshop. Anytime you change the raw, you'd have to redo that, or we'd have to crop this out. So we can go and choose Constrain Crop, and that takes care of the problem, but we've lost all that image. And I really don't want to cut off more of my image. What I'd like to do is just fill in the gaps, but in a way that I do it once and I'm done, non-destructively, so I don't ever have to come back to it. Let's undo that Constrain Crop, that's where this new option comes into play. If you have any sort of open pixels here, you can just simply choose generate under this generative expand option. So we click on generate and it uses AI to generate new pixels and you can see it's done a pretty nice job. Now, if I zoom in, I will say that 
it's only going to work for kind of social media resolutions at this point. You can see here that's really not ready for printing. This is not something that I think is a finished feature that you can use on any image at any resolution. Clearly, the lines don't match, and that's not great. Now we can play with the variations and see if we get a better match somewhere. And I'd say none of these really work because they're just a low resolution source. It's obviously an upsampled version. You can see how it's bigger, the, the grain is bigger. So hopefully in the future, we'll have a high resolution fill that looks right. But I think it's very promising. It's absolutely the right direction to go. And if you just need something for social media, then you know that's gonna do the job. This is perfectly fine for Instagram. So it comes down to your purpose, but I think that's a very nice new feature for filling in those kind of corners. Or let's cancel this. You know, Let's say that I actually was want to expand the image because right now my tower is not quite on the kind of a rule of thirds and maybe I want to make the image bigger. I can actually out crop, make the crop bigger. I can't just drag it out to the left right now. I can go in, but not out. But if we go over to the enable expand, once you turn this on, now I can click and drag out to the left. And I'm going to go and kind of unlock my dimensions. I'm just going to make it wider like so, and maybe bring in the bottom. So I'm just kind of filling in this corner and this left edge. And again, I can choose the generative expand option to fill in those gaps. And these are pretty big gaps with low resolution. So I don't expect great results, but let's see how it does. And, you know, like I said, it's not great. You'd have to do some work to color match that perhaps. But I think for a lot of cases, it's already a very useful result. So of the three, the generative expand, I think, is kind of most in the experimental phase. It's not totally ready, but it's great for social media. The new adaptive profiles, if I switch back here, the adaptive profiles, I think these are very promising. And then when it comes to the non-destructive denoise raw details and super resolution, I think it's a total home run. It's taking an already great feature and just making it much easier to use. Now be sure to subscribe and click for this next tutorial.